Welcome to Corpse Club, the official podcast of DailyDead.com. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jonathan James, and today I am joined by Tamika Jones and Scott Drebbit. Scott's back. Welcome, Ooh. Scott. Welcome, Tamika. I am. We both are. It has been, well, it's certainly been a while since the three of us have been in any kind of virtual space together uh, talking about True. movies. So I am excited. I'm actually not even sure there's been an episode where it's just been the three of us. This I don't think so first. either. This, this, might be, uh... this might be a first. And we have, an, we have a wonderful topic today. We are going to be focused on Skinamarink. Um, if you have seen it, great, because we're going to get into spoilers. If you haven't seen it, Depends on how you care, you know, how much you care about spoilers, because we're going to focus a lot of this episode talking or, about that but or the definition of a spoiler. This is this is true. But we uh, you know, we always float into different things. And I know Scott recently saw Terrifier, too. So there's a good chance we'll be talking about that as well. But we're going to spend a lot of time talking about skin wearing. And uh, and and I guess I'll start off by just saying that, you know, as just kind of a brief intro for those of you who don't know, this is the the much buzzed about uh, micro budget horror movie from Cal Edward Ball. This was released to theaters. Uh, it, it was in Fantasia, the Fantasia Film Festival, which is kind of where the the buzz started. Um, you know, last summer, and then IFC released it towards the end of the year, and you know, it's been slowly picking up steam and becoming this uh, this you know kind of uh cult hit which is you know for uh, for the small budget it had i think which was like 15 25,000 dollars something like that it's made almost 2 million you know in the next uh next few weeks it's going to cross a 2 million mark so really really impressive and it's not a traditional film not by any means so um and for those of you who've seen it um you know what i'm talking about i think this movie is very polarizing in that i'm I, there are people who have seen it multiple times already there are people who are going to you know midnight screenings it's on shutter so there are people who are you know watching it again and again at home and there are people who have not been able to make it through some of the movie and, and just turned it off so i don't know where my co-hosts sit on this spectrum because i haven't talked to them about it and for me that's that's some of the fun so we're going to talk through it a little bit we're going to see what we get into but first i always like to just just to level set just to know where my my co-hosts are at um tamika we'll, we'll say very high level um you know 10 second impressions what did you think of the movie and what would you give it out of five okay this time i promise not to rate it out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay if you want to you can if you're like it's double double good okay <laughs> i remember that this week okay um huh. okay i'm gonna say that i'm a little conflicted because it was a, i i think i'm in the camp where it was really hard to get through but i think it was effective in scaring me because like my AC, like it's, it's like really loud and especially where I am in the house at like, when it shuts off, it like, I don't know, it makes like a boom sound. And I started to, I was trying to keep it together to stay you know focused, watch the film. And I felt myself sort of like, silently drift and then I heard the AC <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and I got so freaked out <laughs> I started I I absolutely like it snapped me back in I, I kept watching and so I gotta say that I am thoroughly creeped out now I finished it about maybe like let's say like 30 minutes ago Oh wow! Yeah. So you're you're in the you're 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 in the thick of it. That's yeah, fresh, yeah, fresh. I'm in the thick yeah. Of it. So I'm glad we're talking about it because I'm thoroughly creeped and, out. And you and you have friends here who can we well we because we're remote we can't do much but we can <laughs> we can True. watch you. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> we can that cheer you on. Far. Cheer me on from afar. I appreciate it. Whatever, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, no, I and mean, I, I can call I can call nine one one. So I mean okay. that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you know. So out of five, what would you give this? Okay. So 
Um, uh, okay, out of five Barbie dolls. Out of five Barbie dolls. I will give it, I guess it wasn't going to do it. Two point two two and a half Barbie dolls out of two, five. Two and a half Barbie dolls out of five. Okay. Scott, yes. how, how about you? Wow. Is that, is that third doll? Is it the top half or the bottom? I actually, half? I thought about that too. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, well, bottom half. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Bottom half. Uh, I think I, I, I'm, I'm positive that I uh, <laughs> would rate it higher than than Tamika uh, uh, just did. I uh, I I watched it today uh, earlier hey. today, so not quite as fresh, uh, but by mere hours as as Tamika's <laughs> viewing. Um, a quick impression, uh, the ten second impression. Um, that you were looking for Jonathan would be uh, immersive um, unique uh, one and done uh, effective I'll just we'll throw those in the air for the uh, for the quick 10 second uh, sounds good I, I yeah. like it and, yeah. and then the the out of five rating out of five rating uh i'm gonna stick with the barbies uh because yes. i quite yes. like <laughs> i quite like that uh I, but i i think i would definitely i it's definitely four uh, barbies out of out of five for sure oh wow Ooh. i i wasn't sure how this was gonna pan out and because uh, we don't have Brian here, I know Brian wasn't wasn't the biggest fan, but I wasn't sure where where this was going to oh, go. Oh, and so I think this is really going to be the the uh, Skinnerink fan club here because I loved it, and oh. um, and so I would also give it the I would give it four Barbie dolls on the ceiling out of five. Yeah. Um, and we'll 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 get into it from there. I was I was not expecting I was not expecting this, oh, okay. um, which which it works. Okay. So we now we can just talk about uh, what what we liked and and what worked and and why this is you know such a such a special film. Um, I think for me, and there's and there, there's I, I think I'll talk a little bit about the technical side, and I think I'll say that like. It's really cool that this movie kind of took some of the trends that we find online and was able to put them together into this experimental horror film. Because while this is this is certainly unique for a feature film and certainly unique for many of the people who have seen it and for a movie to be in theaters, there is, you know, this like analog horror type movement or liminal spaces horror, which we're seeing online. And, and Derek had actually turned me on to this a little bit ago with the back rooms, which is kind of this, these like internet videos where it's a like endless maze of office rooms and you can't get out or a parking lot that you can't get out of. And they take their time. They obviously are very low budget. Um, but the idea is to kind of put you in this unsettling space and to use um, obscured visuals and to use the audio, kind of knowing you're watching it on your laptop or on your phone and being able to kind of unsettle you knowing that they, they have a different type of audience. And so I really like that that what, what uh, Kyle Edward Ball was able to do was kind of take the next step and bring this, um, like I said, to a feature, which, which is, 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 is no easy, which is no easy task because you got to keep your interest for an hour and 40 minutes without really seeing any characters. So I think there's a lot of, I think the technical work, and like I said, I'll at least, I think we'll can at least start there. I think the technical work is masterful. I think the, and I guess I'll, I'll 
say it, even though I think it's, I, I think it's, what do you call it? Uh, simplifying it, but almost like an ASMR style audio where you're, it's, it's whispers. It's, you know, these small sounds and then being able to contrast it with those scares and those like sharp noises that come out of nowhere um, makes it for a, a different type of experience where you are a captive audience member. I couldn't take my eyes away from it because I was worried I was going to miss something hiding in the shadow. Mm -hmm. I had to listen to everything because I knew there weren't subtitles in every single thing that the kids were saying. And there are some things that you have to hear, um, have to hear for yourself. So, um, so yeah, I guess I'll just start there and, and say, you know, what did, what did you two think? That's interesting that you bring up back rooms because I'm familiar with that because I'm better now, but there was a, a stretch of time where I was like really on TikTok, <laughs> like really on there. Um, but I, I wonder, I wonder why now I, I, I'm thinking why I didn't enjoy this, why I wasn't as captivated because I'm usually, I usually like stuff like that. Like um, it kind of reminded me of a little bit of Five Nights at Freddy's where, you know, like uh, you, there's a lot of time where you're just sitting in a dark room and it's like a really weird angle, like the, the camera angle for the game. And you're just kind of staring at something and you just, all you hear are like these just like creepy noises. And so I, I'm, I, I, I thought, okay, it's like, okay, this is kind of promising because I feel like this is going to get me. I, I can do this. I do this. I thought nice at Freddy's. But I, I couldn't, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was maybe, okay. The, the camera angles were very unsettling and I, I liked that. But I think maybe that's why I wasn't able to really get hooked because it reminded me of when, you know, well, okay, so I have a two-year-old cousin. She's almost two. And she'll take my phone when I'm not, you know, looking. And she'll, like, just take pictures or videos. She doesn't know what she's really doing. She's just pressing buttons. And, like, I'll get my phone back. And I'll look through the gallery or, like, the camera reel. And it's just, like, a random picture of, like, the ceiling or, like, a weird corner in the floor. And she's just, like, and I'm, like, what am I even looking at? And I think maybe that's it. The, the, the camera angles sometimes just took me out of it because I just thought, okay, just like my cousin Gigi just like taking my phone and sitting it down. And then now I'm just looking at like, I'm like, what am I looking at? I don't know. And the focus is on it for such a long time that I can't really get into it until something happens. And then I'm like, oh, okay. What's, what's happening what's happening here and then i reset almost does any of this make sense i feel no like of course no, yeah no no he, no but what you said makes perfect sense that you know okay. this movie i mean obviously this, this movie you know breaks you know kind of traditional cinema rules or or we'll say more traditional studio rules right we're not following these characters um in any traditional sense we are getting and there is not as far as I can tell, because there's some mystery to the movie, which we'll get into, but um, there is not a consistent like visual language where we're always following the like POV of the kids, whether it be Kevin or Kaylee. Yeah. Sometimes it's like you mentioned, like there's a camera that's just out of kind of the the range of a uh, view where we can't exactly um, see what's going on. And sometimes it's a close up here, but we don't know, you know, in a traditional um, like found footage movie, right? You would have the camera person. We don't have a definitive camera person that we're aware of. Maybe you could say, Hey, it's an entity. Um, but it's certainly not always the kids. And, uh, and, 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 and that can be a little trying, especially because there are some of those long angles and, uh, or, or long shots where you're just kind of waiting for something to happen. And some, sometimes nothing happens. Right. right yeah. yeah. Well, like you're saying, the, um, 
for me, it's a matter of it comes across as conditioning. Mm -hmm. um, he sets out from the start of the movie, um, let's say the first 10 minutes or so, is just getting you adjusted to your surroundings and to introduce our two um, protagonists, sort of, kind of, as much uh, as it does, or as much as you think they're going to be traditional uh, protagonists, but they're not. They're not traditional protagonists at all, and that's kind of what makes it different is you mentioned sometimes the POV is from Kevin or Kaylee or the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, which makes it absolutely fascinating. So, and, and what it ends up being, I find is because you get so conditioned to the surrounding is a, a, as I said in the intro, it becomes immersive, but uh, and this uh, this applies, I guess, technically, but also, you know, uh, uh, emotionally, psychologically, it's a movie where you have to meet it halfway mm. uh, to to appre to to I think fully appreciate it because um, what it wants from you is to give yourself to. Uh, the experience it's almost two hours long uh you know if if we're going to talk in the deficit column um you know i would say it's probably at the halfway mark when it really gets going and and it's the i think is boosts the the movie even higher for me is is that second half of that movie but the first half is uh you know, does it does it need trimming? Well, no filmmaker is going to say their their movie is exactly the length that it's supposed to be. So this yeah. is the length it's supposed to be. It's the length it's supposed to be. Uh, I just found the second half of the movie when I, I won't go spoiler when. I'll oh, no, just, we're, we're spoiling. You can talk about whatever you want here. Um, OK, we're spoiling. Uh, yeah, no, because I want to talk about the end and we already yeah, gave him a warning. OK. <laughs> Okay, the uh, around the halfway point, I think, is where we start to uh, find a lot more communication with the monster. Uh, and, and and in that first half of that movie, there was a point where and, and I understand why some people, have, you know, bail on it 20 minutes in 15 minutes in, half an hour in. I get it. If it's you're just not vibing with it, I get it. But if it's a matter of if you're wondering when things are going to happen, it's it's right around the halfway point, close to an hour in, uh, where it just seems the stakes feel a, like there's a little more at stake. Uh, the it just the monster comes across. The one in the dark that's communicating uh, with Kevin, essentially, uh, very gets more and more malevolent, uh, and and very effectively so because you you never see this monster; you only hear it communicating with with uh, with Kevin. Yeah, it definitely. You know, it definitely takes some time to get going. And, and I, I think that's a great point that you, you made about the kind of meeting it halfway or kind of having to, to kind of get get adjust to what they're they're showing. Because I even though I saw it recently, I intentionally didn't read reviews um, or read too much about this. So I did expect a more like traditional narrative film. So, you know, once I. You know, it did take me maybe like 15 minutes to be like, okay, this is what we're getting. This is, this is kind of what, what it's going to be. Um, I do think though, that it, it, it has a, it has a great initial premise because 
you know, if you put yourself, and I think what this movie also does a great job of is kind of putting you in the shoes in some cases, literally, because you're, you're doing, it's POV sometimes, of these young kids. And, you know, and Kevin's four. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're really young kids. And just imagining, you know, kind of waking up and not knowing where your parents are and not being able to leave and there's no doors and windows like this is terrifying. This is mm -hmm. th th these are nightmares that, that, that people have as adults um, and as kids, certainly um, even more terrifying. And so I think they, they start off with this with this uh, kind of great premise and and then just continue to build upon it. I, I honestly had no idea where the, the movie was going after they kind of got locked in and uh, it just seems to continue to escalate and escalate. And, um, and yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was clever. They even got rid of the toilet like this, this, this entity or whatever it is, 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 is terrible. Not only did they get rid of the doors, I, I chuggled that with the toilet. I'm that like, was... you, can't, you can take the toilet away oh, from come them. On. You can take away their toilet. So bridge too far. Uh, bridge yeah. Too far. I'm like, you went, you went too far. So <laughs> I thought that was a, that was a nice, nice added touch. Um, but, uh, but yeah. And then, um, and then there are some super effective scares here. I mean, and honestly, I, even, even though, you know, and in many, many, like, I, I think people will kind of look down at, at jump scares and, and jump scares just, a, it's a, what do you call it? It is a, um, it's part of a, uh, horror storytellers bag of tricks. And when used effectively, um, it's perfect. And in this, in this case, um, they do an excellent job of, of using those scares that, that, you know, the Barbie doll on the ceiling, <laughs> yeah. you know what it is, I think. I think why people come away uneasy from this movie for those that it works for is because every shot is anticipation without release. That's how, that's how I saw it. It was all that um, where you're seeing nothing in the dark, nothing in the dark, nothing in the dark. And then something jumps out. It's all the, nothing in the dark, nothing in the dark, nothing in the dark. And then it goes somewhere else and does the same and repeats that same yeah. build up without release again. So that by the end of the movie, um, I mean, it, this, this movie didn't, I think the, the last one that affected me in a similar kind of vibe or vein, whatever, of course, and it's going to get compared to is, is of course, Blair, Witch project uh but that one generally that one genuinely unnerved me this one i just thought was uh a cool immersive uh experience but i wasn't i wasn't like particularly rattled uh by it which is fine i you know it's not our it ain't no contest or rodeo so you right. know well i mean that's interesting people are comparing it to Blair Witch because okay I see that now but I think too I mean that was 99 right and they had the it was so different they had that whole lie going but, <laughs> and it was like real and the, the the people were missing and I think it was you know still relatively new that kind of you know way of filmmaking and storytelling so it could be that you know that we're just yeah. Well, you know, I, just, I think I, I think more. I'm thinking more just of the specific, or the general like vibe and hype around uh, each movie. Skin and Marink has the same kind of uh, juice on it that um, that Blair Witch has. I, I don't I don't think it has as many traditional uh, payoffs as yeah. Blair Witch does. And which is weird to say it's, you know, it's just, it's not as commercial as Blair Witch Project. I know. It's <laughs> wild. It's really I know. <laughs> you know, something wild. we hear every day. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's, um, yeah, it's a fascinating movie. Yeah. 
that I will give it. Yeah. You know, I think it's great to try different things and be really experimental, different. And it's definitely that. So I I do want to like give it another try because I, I it wasn't because I'm tired because I know I'm a grandma and after work, like at six o'clock, I'm already like, oh, I could sleep right now. It wasn't that. It wasn't that because uh, it's towards the end of the week. So I'm like real hype now. <laughs> like it's almost the weekend. So it's not that. So I, I feel I feel good in saying that. So I'm going to try. I'm going to try one more time. Maybe I just need. Well, there's no obligation you no. Know, uh, to uh, feel different about it. I. Uh, yeah, interesting. I was thinking. uh you know, replay value. There's another category. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, we can talk about it. Is this one that I'm going to, you know, pop in? Pardon me, once a year or something at Halloween or, you know, on your birthday or, or on whatever the case may be. <laughs> um, and I, and I don't know. I, do I want to see it again? Yeah, because I want to see it again, maybe a little further down the road just to see kind of cement it where it sits for me beyond that i don't know about the replay value uh on it for me personally you know yeah i think for me the replay value is in knowing that i missed knowing that i definitely missed things that might have been in the darkness or that the filmmaker was uh, was trying to show us and also because and I know that this has been like, like a lot of discussion, like trying to understand the story or the narrative that they're trying to tell us or the subtext of it, because, you know, we're given a lot of, I shouldn't say we're given a lot of, we're given very few details, but the details we are given spark a lot of questions. Yeah. So we know, for example, that that Kevin hit his head in the beginning because we hear the dad talking about it. He hit his head, but he'll be okay. Then things start to happen. We hear Kevin say something, uh, talking to Kaylee about their mom, and I think Kaylee doesn't want to talk about it. So we can infer that something happened to the mom. Did she die? Has she been dead for a while? Was she injured? We don't necessarily know. There are things like the supposed 911 call that goes nowhere. But Kevin did talk to a, 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 an operator. Was it, you know, sometimes as you see in a movie where it's like like smile or something, where it's just something else on the other line. It's not really a human. Or did Kevin really, uh, really call out? And so and then, of course, there is the, um, you know, the face at the, the end of the movie. Is that the is that the mom? Is that an entity? Is that is that the 911? You know, is that is that a paramedic? Um, and so we, we, I guess at surface level, we definitely see that there is this paranormal entity that is impacting this family and these kids. But I think, you know, Underneath that, you could say, hey, is this trying to tell a story of abuse? Is the the dad really like, you know, the monster? And because we do see him from time to time um, and we do, like I said, we do know the kid has, has, has hit his head or at least that is the dad's side of the story. We do know the mom has been hurt or is gone. Is this the kid's interpretation of, of an abusive household? Um, and I don't think there, you know, unless the, the, the unless, um, you know, the, the filmmaker explicitly says that I don't think we're going to get an answer just by watching the film. That is, uh, well, that is some heavy shit. Right. And wow. that's, that's, uh, no, that totally fits. I mean, that, that interpretation, um, a hundred percent fits and it's such a, broad canvas that there's room for i think quite a lot of interpretation and, and and a lot of what you're saying here has now got me already wanting to go back and look at certain things and see how they fit and whatnot what one of the great things 
I thought was the sound design was uh, really, really great because it's a, it's a movie where not only are you adjusting your eyes, uh, but you're also adjusting your ears as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he does a really, and he does a really good job of this. Like I said, you know, it, it, it was, get, I had heard of people bailing around like the one hour mark uh, on social media. Mm. So I was, and I'd seen a couple things on that. So I thought, okay, let me see when I get to around that point, if there is, you know, if, if some of the wheels are starting to come off or something like that. And, and I, I, what I, what I will say is that I could see maybe a, uh, a staticness or a lack of intensity that does change uh, right about the time that they bail. <laughs> and, and like I said, we start to hear more, from the malevolence and uh it's not happy it's not happy with kaylee uh in a nice in a wonderfully nice nod to the twilight zone uh when he takes away her her mouth and uh and her eyesight and then is it before then that he makes her gouge her eye out with the uh exacto knife well i thought it was and this this goes back to not i think it was kevin that that got himself uh, with the with the knife, um, because right. then he calls the then, then he, he calls, calls the paramedics and he's like mm-hmm. I you know I'm hurt. So right. um, I think Kaylee was first, and I think he see, sees Kaylee without the eyes and mouth, and then I think later the creature you know or whatever tells him to stab himself. Mm. Mm. Not a very nice creature. No, uh, and you know. And, and to the, I think to the film's advantage, uh, you know, we're told jack shit because if you're not going to have a narrative, stick to not having a narrative. And, that is uh, true. Commit. Yeah. And, and commit to not having that narrative. And by God, does uh, Skinner Marink commit to not having a a traditional narrative? I mean, it it's it's a there's a vapor of a story here uh and and when i say vapor i I mean not because it's not there it's because we can almost not see it because it's so not pronounced and again it's a film where it's immersive if you're not going to engage with it you're going to miss you know so much so much stuff and you're just not going to get into it yeah yeah i um i'm with you uh scotty who we're still doing it scotty who <laughs> 2023 yes yes <laughs> scotty who 2023 i'm making a shirt uh, you make it's like a he's CD. running for office <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the selling point because you're canadian like, I want to. I want to mix CD with <laughs> Scotty Poo. A eh? vote for Scotty Poo. A. Eh? I'm right. very sorry, our Canadian friends. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. You're not um, though. You're really not. But that's I'm, okay. No. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> not at all. How did you know? <laughs> <clears throat> no, but you're right. I, I'm. I'm with you there. I think that's why I. I really want to watch it again. Because I think there is replay value because of what you said. That you have to kind of meet it halfway. And maybe initially, you know, I was there. But I don't even think it was an hour. I think it was like 45 minutes. I was like, I, um, I, can't, I can't walk the rest of the way to the, half, the halfway mark in the road. So I think that's why I want to re, you know, rewatch this. Yeah. See, I when when you first started and you gave your impressions, I'm like, well, Tamika likes this. Like she gave it a two point five, but it sounds like it scared her. And now I'm like, no, she's on the other other side, which is okay because, um, like I said, there are which and it works for the the, the 
purpose of the podcast because I know there are going to be people that are listening or maybe they tuned out already, but I know there are people that are going to be listening and they may have done the same thing. So like, there are going to be people all over the spectrum when it comes to uh, all across uh, spectrum when it comes to this film. And, um, you know, I think for me, had it been on a different day, had I been tired, I might have just tuned out. And um, and so I just happened to catch it just on the right day. I was by myself. And, uh, and, and it just worked out so I could be fully immersed. Um, but you know, it, it kind of like, like any movie, but especially this one, excuse me. Like if you're not a, you know, if you're not awake, if you're not, you know, really, um, what do you call it in for the long haul? Um, it, it, it can certainly be a tough watch. Um, I, and I mean, you lucked I, out, I mean, uh, in the sense that you just went along with what the film was um but then there, there's going to be a lot of people who who don't as well and uh you know what and that's fine but uh it i think it really does help um and again people like yourself and myself you know maybe we're some of the exceptions but i think it's good to know kind of what the general vibe of this particular one uh is because it is so different from you know, uh, as we keep saying traditional as a traditional film, it is more experimental. It's, it's, you know, slow burn. Slow is (laughs) slow. For sure. Slow burn. (laughs) Is an understatement. And, and again, knowing that is if you know that and you can attune yourself to that and you want to see what the, I just, I wanted to see, you know, a film uh we all just love seeing stuff where people are are talking about and we've had a lot of that a lot of exciting filmmakers lately um and it's nice to you know see another one who's like two and a half hours away from me so yeah that's kind of that's kind of wild yeah canadian production yeah and i mean and i i think one of the the great things i i love to see is that with uh kyle edward ball like this goes to show because sometimes you hear it where it's like, just go out, just make a movie, like raise a little money. Like you don't need all. And, and I mean, he did it right. He, yeah. you know, for ever again, for like 15, $25,000, something like that, b- borrowed some equipment. Um, you know, I think he filmed in his, his, his old house. Um, and this was, was um, crowdfunded. And so for a very small amount of money, but he just took a, a new approach and had, you know, and had an inventive way on how he wanted to do this. Like I know from the, like, it wasn't like he just, he, he raised the money and I was like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Like he had a very specific approach in mind and, um, and he was able to do it and then got in film festivals and then here we are. So I think this, this kind of, whether this movie worked for you hundred percent or not, I think, you know, we should still root for movies like this because, you know, it, it shows the power of a creative filmmaker that regardless of the budget, you can make something which gets people talking, whether they loved it or hated it, people are talking about it. And um, I think the cool thing about this is that, you know, for his first film for this micro budget movie, people are going to be talking about this movie for decades. There are going to be college papers on this. There are going to be presentations like this movie is this movie is not going to be forgotten anytime soon. You're um, already getting uh, you're already getting a. Uh, the maker of the back rooms who is what 19 years old uh he's getting a 24 a, right yeah a 24 uh 24 is years back old. in his film yeah yeah <laughs> that's right yeah yeah so it's and I, uh it's the next thing and i yeah and that's that's exactly it i do think that this is and I, I, maybe we've seen others, but maybe for horror, I think this is going to be the start of a new kind of wave of horror films in that, as I mentioned, this was targeted to a demo that would be a, a younger demographic, um, even though anybody can watch it. It was targeted to people who may be listening on their um headphones who may be watching from their computers and watching on their phones and arguably the experience uh, i did play it briefly i didn't have a chance to watch it a second time but i just wanted to hear it from my headphones and it's a completely different experience when you're watching it you know 
with the, you know, kind of your on a traditional TV versus having it plugged in. Um, and so I do think we're going to see more filmmakers experimenting with how can I make something that captures a new audience? How can I make something that will scare people who spend most of their day on TikTok? Um, and even though, like I said, this movie and its pacing is a little, a, a little long, um, I do think we'll continue to see more experimentation like this, hopefully. Absolutely. Not only uh, that and, you know, I think, I think we'll see it. I think the smart filmmakers will maybe move it, uh, blend it in with some more traditional uh, techniques and material uh, where I, I think it would actually be more effective uh, where it would stand out as as certain set pieces, I think, would within a traditional environment. And I think, I'm not saying that he's not a smart filmmaker. I think what he's done here is uh, quite, a, quite a feat. Um, here he is playing, you know, in theaters uh, all over the world for no money at all, just imagination and uh, and some friends. And, uh, and it's, and, and it's effective. And, uh, you know, I think the really exciting thing is, is this is what he's doing with no money. Uh, I, I'm curious, very curious Ooh. because I know that he's these liminal spaces that he taps into. Uh, and again, it's, it's, it's going directly to us because, Honestly, I never felt connected to Kevin or Kaylee at all because I don't think the narrative holds them up whatsoever. It constantly pushes them aside, leaving us alone in the room, looking in the corner, looking in the closet. When I was a kid, I, I had shared a room with one of my older brothers. And in the corner of the room, was a closet and there was a window in that closet and the moonlight would come in through that window but the closet door was always ajar and you would get nothing but blackness coming out of that closet and i'd been in that closet every day of mine but at nighttime as we all know in the dark that's different. And, and, and Skinnamarink is very good. If you're the kind of kid who is, has that kind of kinder trauma, it's, he's very good at, at reigniting that, but not necessarily, again, that's what I think is interesting narratively. Not, you don't necessarily feel the danger for the kids, but you're just uh, immersed in this experience. Yeah, and I think that's an excellent point. I wasn't really worried about the kids. I was more, you know, I was, I was, it was more like I was in the room. In some cases, you know, and this is interesting because this kind of reminds me of like a immersive experience like Sleep No More or like Blackout, where in some cases, like you are the viewer as things are going around beside you. And in some cases, you can't see everything. There may be things happening in, in other rooms or there may be something that's happening outside of your site. And I think because they're able to immerse you so much within the space that now you are locked in, um, I think maybe for me too, it was a feeling of helplessness for these kids. Like, you know, like as a viewer, like I cannot help these, you know, again, it's it, maybe it's a little different because we see, you know, movies with, you know, somewhat older kids who may run into a situation like this, but four years old, like kids stabbing himself. Like I can't stop that from happening. Um, and it's kind of interesting how, um, at least for me, it kind of was able to kind of pull that reaction where I was like, Oh, like, like, you know, like stop. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's really, really a, an impressive debut film. And, uh, and I, I'm glad I finally had a chance to see it. I would have seen it earlier, but but not going to uh, to theaters very often. No, uh, you know, Shutter is the the perfect place for it. Again, 
they really, they actually, if you go through their catalog, they do have a lot of titles that deal with uh, auditory uh, horrors and whatnot. And I think this is a film, I think, you know, down the line, this is going to end up being, you know, as we're saying, probably a whole nother subcategory. Well, I think now that we've said almost everything we have to say about Skin Rank at this point, the one thing I did want to, well, as I kind of segue this, is I think what's cool is that we are seeing smaller budget, micro budget, crowdfunded movies that are getting into theaters, that are causing buzz. And, um, and it's just, I didn't think we were going to get kind of a, what I would say is at least a little bit of a wave. Now I say wave because I expect to see it happening more and more because with a movie like, you know, terrifier making millions of dollars and, and, and doing huge numbers, you know, during Halloween last year, now skin a a completely different type of film. And then also we saw, um, there was the, um, the kind of spoof on the Grinch that was making money in theaters I heard the the Winnie the Pooh horror movie made something that oh. made like a million dollars internationally. Yeah. So like there is a hunger for independent films that, you know, that they're doing something a little differently that are pushing boundaries, whether it's either gore or just, you know, doing something experimental. I think it's cool that audiences have a hunger for this and hopefully we continue to see it more. Um, but yeah, but taking us back to Terrifier 2, um, I know, Scott, you just had a chance to check it out. We haven't had a chance to talk about it. No. So, so, so let's talk about it. Um, no, what do you think? I mean, I'm, listen, I'm Mr. Late Bloomer. I'm catching up on a lot of 2022 stuff, as I know a lot of uh, people are. So many this, people are. It's, yeah, 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 for sure. And this was one that, would, that I was dying to see last year. And never did a good get around to. And so I just got the Blu-ray uh, the other day and popped it in. And, uh, you know, two hours and 18 minutes later, uh, you know, I stumbled away from the Blu-ray player with a, with a big old uh, a smile on my face. Uh, I loved it. I was one of the, uh, uh, proud to say I was one of the original proponents of uh, the original Terrifier, it was on my year-end uh, best of list. I'm pretty sure. Um, and this is, you know, ten times better than than that. And I and I kind of dug uh, Art the Clown's uh, first uh, for foray around. But this is uh, this has so many great set pieces. Uh, the uh, the practical special effects by uh, writer, director, editor, uh, Damien uh, Leone. Leone? It's a or good Leone. question. Or Leone. Or Leone. I think it's Damien Leone. I think it depends on where you're traveling. I think it depends on, I should have looked that up before I even brought up his name. Yeah, I, I usually I usually do it, but because... I, because this wasn't what well, this wasn't part of the plan originally here's what happens <laughs> okay, i've heard it i've heard it both ways <laughs> have you heard it both ways okay well my apologies uh anyway uh he's a he's an amazing uh an amazing talent um and uh the lead actress is wonderful lauren Levera. Uh, yeah she's lovely and uh uh, David Thornton, David, David Howard uh, Thornton, David Howard Thornton as Art the Clown is uh, just incredible. He's he's terrific. Um, yeah. And and of course, now there's a whole uh, mythology built up, which there wasn't there for the first uh, film. And this one definitely uh, compensates for the lack of speaking of no narrative, uh, the first terrifier. <laughs> really did not have a, a a big narrative this one is has a whole lot of uh, character development. there's a lot of mythology here now and a lot of mythology a lot of world building and a lot of and it's very character driven though too and uh yeah it's just it's it's wild it's uh it's exactly what it looks like on the cover 
Yeah, this type of movie usually is not my jam, but it was on my favorites list. It's it is a movie I have not stopped thinking about since I first saw it. And, uh, and you know, and it, it helps because, you know, I'm always, I'm always a sucker when it goes supernatural, you know, I'm not huge on, on slashers, but, but he's, he's definitely supernatural now. Um, if, if, because I, I know there was like some question as to whether or not he's just like a guy in a, you know, in a, in a clown outfit or, yeah. or not. Yeah. And he's, he's definitely, uh, he's definitely something else, you but know, we, we, mean, we don't know yet. But I mean, you know, if you're going to. I like this approach much better. If <laughs> I really do, if you're going to keep bringing him back anyway, 17 sequels, just make him supernatural uh, from the get go. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of pretending that he's, you know, got any organs that are still functioning. Yeah. And I did. So I love that intro scene with the, uh, with the he goes to laundromat. It's just oh, the launcher. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> gotta clean it off um the the humor the humor in it is yeah and and again not unlike skin and Marink, it's uh you, you know you really you have to be willing to you got to know what kind of ticket you're buying when you're getting uh, uh, when you're getting this you really should for maximum enjoyment uh because again you're there for two hours and, and nearly 20 minutes. So uh, you should know at least kind of the type of movie that you're going to get, but it was uh, surprising in a lot of ways too. It's just, I thought it was really well written. Uh, I think he's a super director. I love his, I love his eye um, and his practical effects that he does are just, you know, it's it really brings you back to the glory days of the over the top 80s, uh, you know, in camera practical uh, effects. It's a real celebration of that kind of, uh, uh, you know, unapologetically, too. Right. Like it's like there's no holding back. Oh, no, not 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 at all. Not at all. And I know this movie has really, you know, given uh, people some people, the vapors, uh, something fierce. And that's, I think that's wonderful. I think yeah. that's absolutely wonderful. Because Especially because it's, it's legit. Cause watching this movie, I'm like, Oh, I, I know for sure. People were throwing up. <laughs> if I showed my mom this movie, she would be gagging at, uh, at that, that bedroom scene or the roadkill. Like this stuff would get her. So like for people saying that some of this stuff was made up, I promise you it's not because I promise if I, if I show this to my mother, she would throw up. Shell walked in the room when the girl was getting scalped <laughs> with the scissors. <laughs> and she happened to look at the TV. And she's like, what the hell <laughs> what, that? what are you watching? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> Yeah, and I do like, I think all of the actors are, are pretty solid, like, especially because, yeah. you know, I mean, some of the setup is like your traditional, like, nightmare or, or you know, type uh, or like scream type setup. But sure. I thought, like, even the uh, even the younger brother, the friend, like, I thought everybody, everybody was pretty solid. Yeah, no, the, and the relationship between uh, her and the brother, uh, again solid and really well developed there's a lot of uh, character development but the film yet the film doesn't drag and, and i think one of the reasons is because if you i guess if you enjoyed the first movie or or if you maybe didn't enjoy the first movie but you like the idea of art the clown and maybe a more uh character driven story well Welcome to the sequel. Yeah. It's been supersized. Uh, I think, who is it? Um, Mike Flanagan calls it the first mega slasher. Yeah, yeah. He, the, he there was he, he had, there was something, and maybe that, it's that's a new that's subcategory. A, yeah. He said it's a new subcategory, the mega slasher. And I do agree. You could give this a, a subgenre where it's. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of a lot of imitators um, for sure following this. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's uh, I suppose that the formula is not too far removed right from uh, from Alien and, and Aliens. Right. The first one was kind of low key. And then the second one becomes something different and bigger and, you know, uh, expands 
uh, on it. I mean, this was, I think, I think what people were responding to is if the, if they liked the character of art, um, they really get a chance to see him frolic while also getting uh, character stuff that doesn't just make it one note. And when, and when that's done, it's just like so it just blows the first movie out of the water. And what I love is he's like, he doesn't trim anything down. It's like, you have your character stuff and your gory stuff. I'm not cutting either. Nope. You, you get, so you get all of it. So that camera does not, the, not look so away. That, so that's how you get your two hour and 18 minute uh, movie, but I'm glad for it. Cause it's like, as we're saying stuff like skin and Marink, stuff like this, uh, you know, it's low budget. They're giving the ingenuity a chance again, because I think with COVID, they realized they really had nothing to lose. Uh, and, and, and how much is it costing to put it up, to put up a movie like this based compared to what the return, you know, could be on it. I mean, what's your investment in it, right? Like yeah. what's the investment in skin and rink if it costs $15,000. Yeah, and right. I think both of these are both of these are great examples of one, don't wait for everything to be perfect. Don't wait to get that million dollar or ten million dollar deal, um, because that may not be what you want. And also like don't hold back. <laughs> you know, the movies people are talking about are the movies that are a little different or a lot different, a lot weird, that are somewhat dangerous and uncomfortable and make people feel uncomfortable. Like if you're not doing that, then you're probably going to get lost in the sea of all the other horror releases across movies, TV, video games, comic books, and everything else. So, you know, I think these are great examples of do your own thing, raise however much money you need to raise, and make sure when you do something, um, you know, uh, I guess, I guess shoot for the stars, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, and definitely don't play it safe. Don't be like, Oh, this, this would be a great, you know, this would be a great, uh, what do you call it? A great Warner brothers movie, or hopefully this, you know, this studio acquires us or this, this network acquires us. Um, just, just do your own thing. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with that being said, we're wrapping up this episode, but it's been very nice to catch up with uh, with you, Scott and Tamika. It's uh, it's it's been it's it's always wonderful. Um, it's 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 we we should just have you know we'll, we'll just record an episode where it's no movie talk. It's just us catching up. Um, but as our as we know and as our listeners know, um, who have longtime listeners, we always talk before, we always talk after. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, um, this is always these episodes are always one big uh, opportunity for us to catch up. Um, we want to thank Brian, our engineer, for helping us out each and every episode. Thank you so much, Brian. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. And we want to thank our thank listeners, you, including those of you who have signed up for Corpse Club membership. We're doing this thanks to our Corpse Club subscribers and our Daily Dead readers and all of our Corpse Club listeners. Make sure to visit CorpseClub.com to check out our whole backlog of episodes. We have 280. I can't believe 280 episodes. <laughs> we do. We do. We have, we're, we're getting close to 300. We're going to be there this year. Oh, wow. I know. It doesn't feel like it, but that's where we are. I mean, like seven of them. <laughs> that's, that is not true at all. Um, that's, that is not true at all. You can also sign up to become a Corpse Club member. Not Scott, because Scott, you are a Corpse Club member, but our listeners can sign up yeah. to become a Corpse Club member. And uh, we have uh, t-shirts, we have pins. You can pick an episode topic. Don't forget to rate and review us. Uh, especially on Apple Podcasts. Every rating and review helps. And you can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and all of your favorite podcast providers. If you want to get in touch anytime, reach out. We're at contact at corpseclub.com. On Twitter, we're at Daily Dead News, at Corpse Club, and on Instagram and Facebook, we are under Corpse Club as well. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, stay scary. Stay scary.